Now, moving forward, I'd like to call on a wonderful professor with a master's degree in pathology, Dr. Ravi Shankar, as he leads the medical students in the Hippocratic Oath. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. I should maybe correct myself, I think. Maybe there were some errors. So I'm actually a, I'm an MBBS, I am an MD in pharmacology, and I have a what, fellowship in health professions education. So it's my privilege to take you through the Hippocratic Oath, the modified version. Before we go into that, let's, let me give you some background about this. So Your Excellency, dignitaries on the dais, my fellow faculty members, fellow staff members, parents, students, and friends. Let me congratulate the new graduates. So medicine and nursing are both tough professions. It's a long period of study. And I believe we should share in your success. OK, so let's give them a hand before we actually go into the oath. Thank you very much. So I was doing some, I like the history of medicine. I think most the students whom I taught know that I like history because I believe without history, you cannot progress further. Each step you take depends on those who were there before you. So I'm very happy that Mr. Dollar shares my love of history because history of medicine, any history is so important. So I believe you know about Hippocrates, Hippocrates, was one of the famous Greek physicians, lived about nearly 2,300 years ago. I think many of you know him, because what we are taking today is a modified version of the Hippocratic Oath. It was modified many times by many people. So Hippocrates is widely regarded as the father of medicine. The medicine which we practice today is from Greek and Rome. That's the basis of Western civilization. It's Greco-Roman medicine. So I think someone, I think it was Dr. Rose who said, you know, you have to keep on studying. I believed when I finished my medical degree that I could hang up my books. Okay, then I had to do post-graduation. I believed when I finished my post-graduation, I am done. Then now unfortunately, I chose a subject which is constantly changing pharmacology, medicines, every day, there are so many medicines. So most of the medicines I teach you today were not there when I was studying. Okay, most of the medicines which I am teaching, I came to know after I graduated or after I did my degree. The same will be true for many of you as we go along. So, yeah, before I think I talked to some of you. So we are moving forward. Everyone has already said for accreditation, we are working strongly. So maybe we'll inter get a chance to interact with some of you. We need your help. Accreditation is mainly a lot of data. Okay, how, you, how you pr present those data to the accreditors is very much important. So we require your help and your cooperation. So coming to the Hippocratic Oath, I, this is a version, I don't know whether any of you know it. So this is a version which was modified by Louis Lassana. Louis Lassana was a clinical pharmacologist. He then became, like, you know, like many pharmacologists, he became a dean. Okay, you've got two types of doctors, those who go and practice medicine, and others who become deans and professors. Pharmacologists widely like to become deans and professors of medicine. He talks about many things. Some areas which I feel we may have to include, one is pharmaceutical promotion, extremely important. Unless you respond properly to pharmaceutical promotion, you will never be a good doctor. Okay, so let, let's, let me call upon the new medical graduates to kindly stand up. And those other doctors who like to refresh their oath can also do so. Free will, I don't want to force anyone. I strongly believe in free will. So let's start with the Hippocratic Oath. Kindly repeat after me once I pause. Okay, I swear to fulfill 
to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians on who, whose steps I walk. And gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures which are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science. and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death. If it is given to me to save a life, all thanks. But it may also be within my power to take a life This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. Above all, I must not play at God. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart a cancerous growth, but a sick human being, whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes these related problems if I am to care adequately for the sick. I will prevent disease where, whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings. those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. may always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help.
Okay, thank you very much and welcome to the medical profession. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Shankar. You can please have your seats.